This is the Kenwood TS700S. This is a radio from the late 70s. It was the uh, successor of the uh, TS700A, which did not have the uh, digital display. This one does. It's a uh, fluorescent display. It's a, uh, it's a nice radio. It's built very well. This is all metal. No plastic on this one. And um, and it can do actually quite a lot even for today it is an all mode radio as you can see frequency modulation upper sideband lower sideband and it actually does have AM that's kinda neat um, let's go over the controls quickly we have obviously a power on off switch the radio runs on AC uh, it can also run on DC but right now I have it on AC so it's really a desktop radio a base station if you want to call it that this is a uh, transmit receive uh, that is obviously parallel to the uh, microphone. Uh, we got a noise blanker that actually works quite well. I tried it earlier. Uh, we got a, uh, a receiver increment tuning that works in conjunction with uh, with this here. And this this uh, the, the the S version actually had a uh, preamplifier in the uh, an extra preamplifier in the receiver chain in the RF stage, which could be activated. To improve the signal to noise uh, behavior a little bit better to lower the noise figure. Um, Most switches we already discussed. The radio uh, it can do 10 watts or half a watt, about half a watt, I would estimate. Uh, this is what we get full scale uh, 10 watt. This is what I get at uh, at the low power setting. So it looks like about half a watt. Uh, the display uh, uh, is up to 100 Hz accurate. You can actually, in the frequency uh, uh, FM mode, you can turn off the 100 Hz digit if that is too annoying by, uh, by pressing this button here. That is under the hood for the controls that are less frequently used. Since we're looking at that, let's look at the rest. Uh, this is the uh, single sideband microphone gain. Uh, we got, uh, actually it's explained here, we got the uh, FM microphone gain can be set, the AM carrier can be set. Uh, the right setting for that is one quarter of peak power, which would be two and a half watts, so it's not too much for AM. And then of course we got uh, uh, side tone, if you want to listen to your to your own modulation, can be set. As well as the anti-vox, the, the radio has a vox, and here you can set the anti-vox. The... Um, uh, controls here are for repeater uh, off normal and reverse um, so it can do repeater although there is no uh, PL tone in it there was actually room for uh, for a PL tone uh, fork a tuning a tuned fork they called it I've never seen those things it plugs in here but I've seen people put a uh, one of those uh, PL tone boards there that's actually where the input goes to the FM modulator so that's for the repeater. This is for the Fox that we discussed earlier, gain and delay. We got drive. This is not what it implies. This actually tunes the pre-stages for, uh, for the transmitter because the, uh, re the, the radio is relatively wide, 4 MHz. Uh, they did not have wide band amplifiers at the time. 
So with this you can peak the, uh, the, the, the optimum power level. It does not have a lot of impact I noticed. I can show you. You see you can peak it to, uh, to the maximum output at that particular frequency. Uh, it's a little bit weird but that's the way they did it in those days. It only works for the transmitter. The receiver also has vary caps in the RF stages but it is tuned with a resistor bank that's changed uh, when you change the band uh, uh, switch. This is the band switch. It does 144, 145, 6 and 7 in 1 MHz steps and here you uh, change that. Now it can do uh, uh, it can do uh, uh, fixed frequencies that basically it would be a crystal that has the same frequency as the VFO. The VFO unit covers uh, 8.2 to 9.2 megahertz and you can put crystals in here I think 11 in total with that same frequency and select them with that switch on the front. The nice thing is that CB crystals at the, at the fundamental fre uh, frequency cover that frequency so you actually could use cheap CB crystals in there to create uh, fixed uh, uh, frequencies. It's not really needed. This, this VFO is uh, very stable, very smooth. So uh, I, uh, I don't see any need for it, but if you really wanted to do that, you could do it. And this is the switch that, uh, that you would uh, use. Now if you do that, you see that the display goes out. That is because there is no uh, uh, local oscillator signal coming into the counter right now. If you put a crystal in there, then actually this display comes on again with the proper frequency. So that's kind of neat that you know exactly what frequency you're operating at. Uh, drive we discussed, uh, re receiver increment tuning we discussed, sometimes called clarifier. Uh, we got the squelch. Works very smooth. I don't know how they pulled that off in the old days, but the squelches on these old radios is so much nicer than the new radios, much more sensitive. It's probably because these are real noise squelches that are based on the uh, noise that is absence once the detector receives a signal and nowadays it's all AGC based and that just doesn't work as nice uh, here we have the uh, AF and RF gain uh, RF uh, obviously influences the AGC and uh, AF is obviously volume radio has good volume no complaints there so that's basically it. The tuning has a fast and a slow. This is the core, the fine, excuse me, fine tuning. Here is coarse that you can grab the outer ring and go a little bit faster because you have to do quite a lot of revolutions to get there. Uh, because this is a very uh, uh, smooth and uh, high resolution tuning. I don't know if you can, no, you probably can't see it, but there is a whole gear system under in here that uh, controls that. So that's basically what the radio can do in terms of the front controls. And um, you know, it, it, these radios from the 70s just like a, look like a million dollars. These are really nice radios. They, uh, they really look like ham radios and not like, like cheap stereos like today's radios. So that's what, uh, what always attracted me in, uh, in radios from that era. Let's have uh, uh, a look under the hood a bit more and see what we have there. I already showed you a little bit of that. Uh, this is the uh, pre-driver stages. The amplifier, the uh, power amplifier is on the other side. You can't see that, but this is the pre-driver stages. That also has those very caps I was talking about that are tuned with that front adjuster. Here is a uh, helical filter. That is a, uh, a cavity tuned filter. The radios in those days had that to only pass the handbands hand through and to reject pager towers and all that stuff that's just out of band and this is a high Q uh, tuned filter that was used for that purpose uh, you don't see that in today's throwaway radios anymore here is the FM board there is a ceramic filter at 455 kilohertz there is also a uh, another filter at 10.7 megahertz you can see underneath here is the uh, 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 I'm not quite sure what that is might be the uh, receiver board for the single sideband mode this is a local oscillator module. Here is a power supply. Like I told you, the radio can do AC power as well as DC. Um, here is the VFO unit. It's built very well. It's uh, pretty stable. 
and uh, like I said it covers 8.2 to 9.2 megahertz and it's then heterodyned up to uh, to 2 meters underneath there is a whole lot more uh, a single sideband filter is there you can see that I, I don't want to open it right now it's in such nice shape but uh, uh, basically what you see up here there is uh, the same number of boards on the bottom side so it's pretty well packed it has obviously a built-in speaker and here is a hatch that uh, closes if you uh, are done with admiring the insides. Now these are these nylon clips. Uh, unfortunately they don't last very long. There is one is still okay, the other one is, uh, is broken off. You can still buy them. You don't really need it if you really want to look at the same. You could remove this one as well. It looks a little bit nicer. Radio has foot uh, to uh, put it on the side and it has one of those uh, nice uh, carrying uh, handles that they used to have in those days like I said these radios from that area era look really look like a million dollars I love them you know let's uh, have a quick look at the uh, at the back and then we'll see what uh, well no let's first see how it sounds uh, and uh, uh, what it can do before we do that so let's have a look at the at the modulation capabilities there's not much to hear on 2 meter especially not with my antenna so I'm just using it in combination with my ASU FT817 as the uh, other station. We have it at 146.730 uh, frequency modulation and that's what we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I got both radios and dummy loads so there is not too much signal that you will see on the S meter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the nice thing about these radios from the 70s is that they had these uh, FM center meters. I love those. So you can activate that by uh, uh, by toggling this switch. One, two, three, and then that was basically a means to uh, to tune exactly uh, on frequency. One, two, three, four, five. That was the uh, uh, FM center tuning. Obviously, radios nowadays don't have that anymore. That is, of course, because they're all synthesized and accurate enough. But it's also because this radio still has one of those good old ratio detectors in the FM detector where that is very easy to do to add the, uh, uh, the discriminator meter. And these digital radios, well they're not digital, but the highly integrated radios don't uh, have that uh, available anymore. They use quadrature dem demodulators and it's harder to, uh, to make that feature so they just don't do it anymore. But um, that's frequency modulation for you. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see the radio if we transmit. One, two, three, four, five. This is the uh, one, two, three, four, five. This is how it sounds on the uh, Yesu. Works very well. Let's see what it can do in single sideband. Okay, I got the radio at uh, 144.2. That is basically the uh, uh, single sideband calling frequency. I've never heard anything there with my antenna, but that is uh, supposedly the single sideband calling frequency. And we have the uh, Yezu there too. Let's uh, see what uh, what kind of reception we get. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Radio is exactly on frequency 144.2. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is the uh, receiver. One, two, three, four, five. This is the uh, transmitter. One, two, three, four, five. A little bit less volume here. One, two, three, four, five. Testing. Excellent modulation. Like I said, if the modulation is too loud, there is an adjuster inside that I showed you earlier. Single sideband, upper sideband. And we can do the same for lower sideband, of course. Let me do that. All right, lower sideband. One, two, three, four, five. Lower sideband. Lower sideband testing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the same the other way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lower sideband. Now the radio can do AM, so why don't we try that just for the heck of it? Alright, amplitude modulation. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm transmitting now with the Yezu. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. 
one, two, three, four, five amplitude modulation. As you see, I have the carrier less than 20%. I can probably increase it a little bit with that adjuster on the inside that I showed you. But for AM, you need to keep the carrier below 20-25 percent of peak power. One, two, three, four, five, and that works actually quite well. We'll do a, uh, a test. It's kind of a funny test with another radio. This is a uh, airband radio that I have, an ICOM airband radio, and it can actually operate on two meters. I have it at 144.2 now. And it's obviously AM. And let's see how that sounds. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. As you can hear, the uh, modulation from that radio sounds much better than from the Yezu, which is not really designed for AM. But the ICOM airband radio is, and it sounds excellent on this receiver. One, two, three, four, five. Let's try that the other way around when we transmit with the uh, uh, Kenwood. One, two, three, four, five. That sounds much better too. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, as you can see, the Kenwood AM works actually very well. Much better than, than what these modern radios can do on AM. And the only way that you can find that out is if you actually use a, uh, a, a radio like this that was designed for AM only. And uh, Kenwood does a good job there on all modes as you could see. Now there is also a CW mode. Uh, there is no narrow CW filter in this radio so it's basically the single sideband mode but then with the tone oscillator. And if you're into CW you could do that but like I said I've never heard any CW on, uh, on, uh, on 2 meters. Let's look at the uh, re-ray prawn. Alright, here we have the uh, re-ray prawn. Uh, let's start with the upper left. This is the SO239 antenna connector, <coughs> UHF connector. We got a uh, ground uh, terminal there in case it's needed. Here we got the ID plate. Serial number should point to the late 70s. Um, this is a, um, a external VFO connection. So you can use an external VFO as well. If it's not needed then you got to plug in this dummy connector. Uh, we got a fuse obviously. Um, this is for an additional tone pad uh, that you can connect. I'm assuming they mean they mean DTMF, probably not PL tone, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, CW key, there is uh, an extra speaker connector. Um, this is for the FSK input if you want to use an FSK uh, generator. Uh, this is uh, ALC, probably for an external amplifier. We can uh, switch to 120 volt US voltage or 220 volts European or Japanese. Um, I think they got 110 there as well, I'm not sure. Anyway, with this switch you can uh, cover uh, multiple parts of the world. And this is the uh, AC connector. And uh, that connects to a Jones connector and that is the uh, AC power cable. And that is uh, uh, also can also be used for 13.8 volt DC. Uh, the manual explains uh, which pins you need to need, uh, need to use for that. So both AC or DC can be connected. And that's it. Uh, here we have the uh, heatsink for the 10 watt amplifier. Like I said, it's not a huge amount of power, but it's uh, enough to get out, especially on single sideband. Or you can drive a nice amplifier with it. 10 watts is a good uh, good power level for that. Rear apron looks very clean and uh, well designed. Some repeaters don't have PL tones, and uh, as you can hear, that actually works quite well. So if you have a repeater in your neighborhood that does not have a PL tone, this radio would do a good job. In any case, that's it. The Kenwood 2 meter all mode transceiver, the TS700S. Vintage, a vintage ham radio from around 1989, uh, sorry, 79. Very well built and uh, still in excellent condition. Thank you for watching this video.
Back to net control. 